There have long been rumours of Adolf Hitler's escape to South America after Nazi Germany's defeat in the Second World War, where he supposedly lived peacefully for many years. Although this rumour is very unlikely to have any truth to it, many other top Nazis are confirmed to have actually escaped South America to live out the rest of their days. In this video, I'm going to be covering some of the highest ranking Nazis to have escaped to South America following their defeat in World War II. The first inclusion on this list is by far the most notorious, being that of Adolf Eichmann. Adolf Eichmann, who was often referred to as the architect of the Holocaust, was, as his nickname suggests, the man responsible for facilitating and managing the logistics involved in the mass deportation of millions of Jews to the ghettos and concentration camps of Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe. At the end of the war, Eichmann was captured by US forces and spent time in several camps dedicated to high-ranking Nazis under the false name of Otto Ekman to hide his true identity. Unfortunately, before long, he had managed to escape during a work detail at Cham, Germany. After realising his true identity had been discovered, he obtained new identity papers with the name Otto Henninger and moved frequently over the next few months as to avoid capture. He would end up living in Germany for several years after the war, taking up numerous jobs under his false identity before, with the help of Bishop Alois Hudel, an Austrian cleric and Nazi sympathiser who had been residing in Italy at the time, he managed to secure a new false identity, Ricardo Clement, and a passport that would allow immigration to Argentina, which he subsequently did, departing from Genoa, Italy, on the 17th of June, 1950. He arrived in Buenos Aires on the 14th of July that same year, where he would eventually be joined by his family. During his stay in Argentina, he would actually be interviewed extensively using his real identity by a Nazi journalist named Willem Sassen with the intention of producing a biography. Some of the standout moments from these interviews include when Eichmann confessed that he in fact knew that millions of Jews and other people were being killed and that he didn't care about the Jews deported to Auschwitz, whether they lived or died, and it was the Führer's orders that the Jews who were fit to work would work, and those who weren't would be sent to the final solution. To this, Sassen then asked, When you say final solution, do you mean they should be eradicated? To which Eichmann responded yes. Fortunately for the entire world though, this sick man would not be lucky enough to go unpunished and would eventually be forced to pay for his sins when he was captured in 1960 by Israeli Mossad agents. After being captured by the three agents on his walk home, Eichmann was taken to one of several Mossad safe houses where his identity would be double checked and confirmed over the next nine days. This delay was due to the fact that the Israelis were also trying to locate the next inclusion on this list, Joseph Mengele but unfortunately he had already fled the city and the Israelis didn't manage to find any new leads. With Mengele lost to the wind, the Israelis decided they were happy with what they had achieved thus far, and near midnight on the 20th of May they sedated Eichmann as to more easily transport him via plane back to Israel, apparently hilariously stating he was a drunk pilot when asked what was wrong with him. After a few tense delays at the airport, they would eventually arrive in Israel on the 22nd of May. Over the next few months, the long and gruelling trial would take place, with Eichmann, unsurprisingly, eventually being found guilty of 15 counts of crimes against humanity, war crimes, crimes against the Jewish people, and membership in a criminal organisation, and was sentenced to death via hanging on the 15th of December 1961. After an unsuccessful appeal, Eichmann would eventually be hanged a few minutes after midnight on the 1st of June 1962, his last words supposedly being, Long live Germany! Long live Argentina, long live Austria. These are the three countries with which I have been most connected and which I will not forget. I greet my wife, my family, and my friends. I am ready. We'll meet again soon. As is the fate of all men, I die believing in God. Proving that his arrogance truly was with him until the end, somehow believing that if there is a God, he would save such an evil and vile man. The next inclusion on this list, as previously mentioned, is going to be Joseph Mengele, also known as the Angel of Death. Mengele was the man responsible for some of the most abhorrent and disgusting experiments on human beings in history. Alongside these experiments, which could have an entire video to themselves, and indeed already do via a few other YouTubers, Mengele was also a member of the team of doctors who were responsible for selecting which prisoners should be killed in the gas chambers, and was also one of the doctors who administered the gas. Following the end of the war, like Eichmann, Mengele remained on the run for a few months before he was ultimately taken as a prisoner of war by the Americans in June 1945. 
and although he was initially registered under his own name, he was not identified as being on the major war criminal list due to the disorganisation of the Allies regarding the distribution of wanted lists and the fact that he did not have the usual SS blood group tattoo. Due to this blunder by the Allies, he was released at the end of July and obtained false papers under the name of Fritz Ullmann, which he later altered to Fritz Holman. Just like his Nazi friend Eichmann, Mengele remained in Germany for a few years where he temporarily worked as a farmhand before, with the help of a network of former SS members, he made his way to Genoa where he obtained a passport under the alias of Helmut Gregor and sailed to Argentina in July 1949. Once in Argentina, he initially worked as a carpenter in Buenos Aires before taking up a few other jobs, including possibly illegally practicing medicine, including performing abortions. A few years after arriving in Argentina, he managed to obtain a copy of his birth certificate through the West German Embassy in 1956 and was subsequently issued an Argentine foreign residence permit under his real name, which he then used to somehow obtain a West German passport using his real name and embarked on a trip to Europe, a feat made possible due to the Allies for some reason believing he had already died shortly after or during the end stages of the war. During his neat little holiday to Europe, this prick had time to visit his son Rolf, who was told Mengele was his Uncle Fritz, and even went on a ski holiday in Switzerland. His identity wouldn't be able to remain a secret forever though, as in 1959, two Nazi hunters named Simon Wiesenthal and Hermann Langbein collected information from witnesses about Mengele's wartime activities and through a search of public records, managed to discover his divorce papers which listed an address in Argentina. Despite all this information, Argentina, which I don't even know why I'm surprised at this point, initially refused an extradition request because he was no longer living at the address given on the documents. By the time the extradition was eventually approved on the 30th of June, some 25 days after an initial arrest warrant had been drawn up by the West German authorities, Mengele had already fled to Paraguay where he had previously been working and was living on a farm near the Argentine border. It was from this location that Mengele was unfortunately able to elude capture even once Eichmann had been captured as stated in the last inclusion and would eventually move to a farmhouse near Sao Paulo in 1969 with some family friends. A few years after this, he moved into a bungalow rented out to him by those same family friends closer to the city of Sao Paulo and would be visited by his son in 1977 having not seen him since that ski holiday in 1956. His son, Rolf, later recounted that he found an unrepentant Nazi who claimed he had never personally harmed anyone and only carried out his duties as an officer, a common excuse amongst the Nazi elite. Fortunately, although somewhat depressingly, Mengele would eventually die two years later on the 7th of February 1979 while visiting his friends Wolfram and Lizalette Bossert in the, in the coastal resort of Bertuoga. He had suffered a second stroke, the first of which he had suffered in 1976, while swimming the pool of the resort and drowned, finally ending the life of this deranged psychopath. Although it is frustrating, to say the least, that he never paid for his sins, at least we can hopefully find some solace in the fact that he is finally dead now and is unable to hurt anyone else. Well, that's going to be it for this video guys. Again, I'm not going to say if you enjoyed it, but if you found this video interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed if you'd like to see more videos like this. I was originally going to include three high-ranking Nazis on this list, but this has taken me far longer than expected, and I'm planning to get another video out on Tuesday here in Australia, which I am planning to continue as a kind of schedule, so look out for that. But, with all that being said, I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you lovely people in the next one.